Hi there, it's Sandra from the Schwoven's Nest. Welcome to Christmas in July. My first Christmas tree for you today is using a dowel, which I've just cut in half, and a piece of $4 garland that I got at the thrift store. I'm going to paint the dowel with some burnt umber, which actually has some black in it. I found the burnt umber color itself was too light. I was constantly adding black to it, so I figured I'm just going to throw some black right into the bottle until I get the color I like, and that's turning out perfect for me. I'm making the base for the tree and I've got two of these wood slices. I'm using a half inch spade bit and I'm going to go ahead and drill all the way through this first piece. I'm going to hot glue the two pieces together making sure that I have the one with the hole on the top because I have done things like that before where I've glued them together wrong. Then I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue at the bottom of this hole and then insert the wood dowel. Now it's time to prepare the garland. I am trimming off as many branches as I think I'll need. This is about a two foot piece and I probably used about, I'd say only half of it because this garland is so nice and full. To make this tree look more high end and because it's gonna be a small tree, I'm trimming off the ends of the garland. So I'll be doing this for each piece. I will leave a few longer pieces in just for some added texture, but I am gonna give it quite a bit of a haircut. So now I'm going to start assembling the tree. I'm going to wrap it around the dowel just a little bit, and then I'll hot glue it in place. And I'm starting about an inch above the base. I'll repeat that until I've got about six branches at the bottom. To fill in the gaps, I'm gonna take a piece of garland, fold it in half in a V, and then hot glue it vertically instead of horizontally. You'll see what I'm doing here in a sec. These will be my filler pieces because I'm not gonna be able to wind every stem around the dowel. I'll continue to do that all the way around the base of the tree. For the middle section of the tree, I'm going to take some garland, fold them in half, and then glue them right onto the dowel. Then I'll do some more folding in half and put them in vertically like I did previously. I'll continue to fold them in half and glue them onto the dowel until I get to the top of the tree. At the top of the tree, I'm taking the garland piece and wrapping it around the dowel to make the branches a little bit shorter. To create the top portion of the tree, I'm taking a piece of garland and I'm folding it into an L shape and I'm going to hot glue that right onto the top of the dowel. Now I'm just going to cut pieces of garland and I'm going to hot glue them into place and fill in the tree wherever there are some gaps. With the tree filled in as much as I want it to be, I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off any of these really long pieces just so they don't look out of place. I didn't film this part, but you can see at the bottom that I have trimmed off some of the longer branches. I ended up not wanting this tree to be an old fashioned, really wide at the bottom tree, but more of a slimmer tree. So I did decide to take some of those branches off. I'm taking a little string of twinkle lights and I'm just going to hot glue the battery pack right onto the back of the tree on those wood slices. I'm going to give the tree a little bit of some embellishment so I've got some of my mini pine cones from the hemlock tree. I'm going to glue those onto some of the branches. I'm also going to add some little red pip berries. Now I'm going to be taking some white paint and I'm just going to give it a kissed snow effect. I'm just going to dip my brush into the paint and dab it all over the tree wherever I think the snow would naturally hit it. Take a look at this adorable little tree. My second project is using these corks. 
They were graciously donated to me by members of my family, Chelsea and Andrew, who are also the owners of the Happy Dog Homestead blog and the Happy Dog Homestead on Instagram. I'll have their contact down in my description box, so please go take a look at what they're doing. They have some beautiful dogs and they have some wonderful adventures that they can tell you all about. So as you can see, I am building a Christmas tree using the corks. They take a lot of hot glue and you've got to have some patience and some time because the hot glue takes a little bit longer to dry on the corks. I think just because of the material they are. But once you get to this third layer where you can kind of have the cork sitting on top of the other corks, it works out a little bit easier and goes a touch faster. So each time I go in about a quarter of an inch or so because I want to build that tree from larger at the bottom to smaller at the top. So once I get to the third and fourth layer, some of the corks are going to be starting to go on a downward angle and this is because the thickness of the corks is much bigger and I have to adjust for that. So I'm not able to put as many corks in a row as I was for the first and second row. You can also see that I'm trimming some of those corks down to make them a little bit shorter so I can fit things in better. So I'm almost at the top and you can see that I've only got about four or five corks on each layer at this point. I'm going to be needing to trim some down, make them a little shorter, and then I'm also going to be trimming some and filling in the gaps all the way around the tree. So all along I've been using my miter shears to cut the corks and even though they're not softened and they're just the original um, what they are, look at how it goes through just like butter. It's awesome. So if you don't have these miter shears, they are linked down in my description box. You got to get yourself a pair. So trimming this on an angle is going to help me kind of fit those corks in a little bit better. For the peak at the top of the tree, I took two corks and I cut them at a 45 degree angle and glued them together. And now I'm just going to hot glue that right on top of the tree. To attach a base to the tree, I glued a wood slice right inside the bottom layer. And then I'm going to hot glue another stack of three slices right on top. I am super happy with how this tree turned out. My last project for you today is using this wood sign that I did last year. It didn't sell, so I'm going to repurpose it for a new sign this year. The first thing I'm going to do is just paint it black with just regular black acrylic paint. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to paint it white again. But because there's already some black print on it, it's not going to cover very well with the white. So I always do a coat of black first and then go over it again with white. Now I'm going to take these mason jar lids. They are zinc and they, of course, they were from a thrift store. I think it was 20 in a bag for two bucks. Taking my miter shears, I'm just going to give this a good squeeze and you can see that it does bend pretty nicely. It's not going to cut all the way through, but what I need to do is just wiggle the lid back and forth and then it just will pop off. The first cut is the hardest, but the second and third cuts are pretty easily because you can grab the end of that lid and just wiggle it off. I had to figure out a way how to glue these together and then also glue them onto the board. Hot glue doesn't work very well, so I'm using my Starbond medium thickness glue and the accelerator. I'm using some white pipe cleaners or chenille stems, if that's what you want to call them. And I'm gluing that onto the ridge on the inside of the lid. Then I'll spray it with the accelerator to make it dry really fast. I'm going to continue that process until I get the rows that I need. I'm going to start with four pieces at the bottom, three, two, one, and just work my way up so I have the shape of a tree. 
you can see I have the shape of a tree at the top there, but I'm going to be working on this board now. I just need to give it a couple of coats of chalk paint in linen white. I wanted the tree to have a wood base so I found this really thin piece of scrap wood and I'm just going to hot glue that right onto the sign. I'm going to be placing the hot glue right where the chenille stem hits the sign and that's going to make sure that everything stays glued in place. I decided that I still wanted to add little pops of green so I'm adding a little pine pick to the very top of the tree and that will become my tree topper and then I'm also going to trim some of the little pine branches and glue them on the exterior of the tree make it look like it has some real branches. To make this sign look a little bit aged I'm just using some black on a chippy brush and I'm going to dry brush right onto the white and I'm also going to add a little bit more dimension to the frame and dry brush some black on that as well. I'm adding a hanger to the back. These are called sawtooth hangers and the reason I like them is because they're self-leveling and they're super easy to install. They come with these tiny little nails and all you have to do is tack those in place. The nails for these are super tiny, so I always use my needle nose pliers to hang on to them. Otherwise, I'd be banging my thumb all to bits. My first project for you today is using this wooden pizza paddle that I picked up at my local Dollarama store. A couple of weeks ago, I finally invested in a Cricut Joy and I couldn't be happier. I'm going to be able to still create all of my own designs, but the great thing about it is I'm going to be able to make them into free printables for all of my viewers and subscribers. So I'm really excited to be able to share all of that with you. I did find these three trees on pixabay.com and I will put a free printable down in my description box. I'm going to add the words Merry and Christmas and I'm doing this all in the Cricut vinyl simply because this was my very first project that I attempted and I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing. I'm sealing this with a coat of Mod Podge because it's going to be hanging on my front door. It's not going to get wet elements on it but it will be pretty cold right at the front door so I want to make sure that nothing peels off. I decided to add some embellishments to the top of the handle and I'm using some lamb's ear leaves and some pine and some berries and I'm just going to create a design that is appealing to me and hot glue everything into place. I'm using some of the jute rope as a hanger and I fed both pieces into the front of the sign and then tied a big fat knot as you can see here and that will allow the loop to be at the back and hanging nice and flat against the door. I really love how this turned out and I think it looks absolutely fabulous against the white of my front door. This is the bottom of a gift box and I've just torn apart the edges and I'm gonna cut off the excess. I'm going to make my own cone just by folding it and bending it until I get the desired shape. And then I'm just going to roll it and use hot glue to keep it in place. You could also use a styrofoam cone or a metal or plastic cone, whatever you happen to have on hand would work fine. I'm using hot glue on the seam to hold it all together. I'm cutting off the point because I'm going to want to glue a pine cone to the top so I'll need it flat. And then I'm also going to trim the bottom flat and make sure that it can stand totally straight. 
I'm going to be using these white pine cones to create a Christmas tree. These are a garland door hanger that I picked up at Dollarama. I have a couple of these and I also needed to go grab some other pine cones and spray paint them white so I would have enough to go all the way to the top. Before I start gluing on the pine cones, I'm going to add some burlap to it. It's going to do two things. The first thing is it's going to camouflage that white poster board. And the second thing is it's going to really help those pine cones to stick because hot glue sticks really well to burlap. Because it's a cone shape, I'm gonna have to do some trimming, but that's okay. You won't be able to see any of those seams. So here's my cone. I have it sitting on top of a little bottle of Mod Podge so those bottom pine cones won't be resting on the table. I'm going to put a generous amount of hot glue and then I'm going to start at the very bottom and go all the way around the bottom of the cone. If any of the large pine cones have that stem down at the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to trim that away. The bottom should be as flat as possible to make sure that it sticks properly. The second row will be glued opposite to the first row. So you have sort of a brick lay pattern. You don't wanna put them in a line because then you'll have more of the burlap showing. Don't worry about the gaps that you see in the burlap in between the large pine cones. We're gonna fix that in a minute. Our Dollar Tree doesn't usually have these little mini pine cones. So when I found them, I grabbed, I think, six bags of each. I was a little pine cone piggy. So I apologize to anybody who came shopping behind me at that store and wanted to get some because I think I bought them all out. Anyhow, I've got some frosted ones and I've got some plain ones. I'm going to use these tiny ones as my filler pieces. And I'm going to start fitting them in between the cracks in between all of the large pine cones. So here's the top of my cone. I still have some filling to do, but I'm going to be adding this really large one at the very top. And that's why I had that cone cut straight across because I want this pine cone to sit nice and straight right on top of it. I'm going to continue using these little frosted pine cones to fill in all of the burlap. I really love how this is starting to take shape. To add a little bit more extra color and texture I'm taking some of the natural colored pine cones and filling them in different spots around the tree. Down at the bottom there are still some gaps in between the large white pine cones so I'm taking some of these medium sized natural pine cones. I believe I had these last year and they were part of a filler package so I'm just going to take some hot glue and glue those on. To keep this tree looking rustic, I'm using an old 2x4 and a couple of wood slices that have a screw put through them from the bottom to the top. And I'm cutting a piece of floral foam that I'm just going to stick right onto the screw. And then I will put the cone right on top of that. I'm going to make sure that it's wedged in there really nice and tight. The second DIY I have for you today is using some corks. So you'll see that these corks look a little wet and it's a good idea to take them and put them in hot water for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, just so they soften up a little bit. Then they're a little easier to cut and they also won't crumble as easily. Altogether, you'll need three corks for this project. I've cut one in half, so two of the larger corks will be the body and the two smaller ones will be the head. Now I'm cutting some pieces of bamboo skewer, which will become the reindeer's legs. And if you haven't already figured it out, this is the reindeer DIY. Working with corks can be a little tough. 
they were giving me a hard time, but I did use the pointed end of the skewer and then just kind of twisted and pushed at the same time and I was able to get them all in. I also ended up making a little pre-drilled hole with a sharp bamboo skewer and then later on I ended up using a tiny little screwdriver which made a much bigger hole and it was easier to put in. These skewers will become the legs of the reindeer and I'm putting them on an angle so I can make sure that the reindeer will stand up properly. To attach his little cork head, I cut a smaller piece of skewer, made a hole at the top of the reindeer's body, pushed the skewer in and then pushed the cork head onto that skewer. If you're out and about on social media, look me up. I'm on Pinterest and Instagram. So here's my little reindeer. He's standing up on his own fairly well. I'm going to embellish him now and I'm using these little red pip berries for his antlers. So I've cut off a piece of two little pip berries and I'm just folding up the bottom which will be the little antler that is closer to their head. I'm still going to have to make a pretty big hole and push that in. It took a little bit of effort, but it was worth it in the long run because these guys turned out so cute. And here's how my little reindeer turned out. So I've got the reindeer, but now I need their feed. I'm taking this fine weave burlap and I'm gonna cut about a six inch piece off. I'm going to fold it in half and then hot glue the ends together. I've been using those little pink silicone fingertips from the Dollar Tree, but you know what? They just don't fit. They're too small for my fingers. So I decided to just grab one of their little spatulas and I'm using the handle end to place it onto the hot glue and prevent burns on my finger. It's working out really well. Now I'm just gluing the bottom ends together and I made sure that the original seam was also at the back. Burlap is really hard to write on so I decided to grab this little piece of drop cloth and I just cut it into a rectangle shape and I'm going to take a fine tip black marker and write in reindeer feed. Then I'll simply hot glue the little label right on top of the burlap sack. To fill up the bag, I'm just using a little mix of green and yellow peas. This is just something that I had for a fall craft, so I thought I would just use it up. And then I'm just going to hot glue the bag together. I'm also just going to take a little bit more of that buffalo check ribbon and glue it onto the top, crossing it over in the front, and then adding a little bit of holly and some leaves. Being a crafter, I save everything. This is a lid from a canister that I redid last year. I'm gonna use some crud cutter and just clean it up really good before I start painting it. It's already got this little lip on the inside, so I thought that would be a perfect little frame. I'm gonna give the inside square a couple of coats of DIY chalk paint. I have this stencil of a Christmas tree and I thought I'm going to do something a little different. I didn't want this Christmas tree to be a solid black so I'm just going to tape it down and what I'm going to do is dry brush it. The technique I use is to dip my brush into a little bit of paint and then dab off as much excess as I need, usually quite a bit. I usually start on the lighter side and then I add more paint as I need. What I'm doing is just going back and forth, making sure that I hold the edges of the stencil down nice and tight so my brush doesn't go underneath and bleed through. This is turning out amazing. I love the texture of it. I love how it looks. It's getting some of the lines from the white paint underneath and it turns out amazing. For a finishing touch, I'm just taking my dry brush and going all the way around the edges, a little bit extra in the corners to make it look more distressed and worn. Thank you. 
the second little mini sign that I'm going to make is just using this little piece of scrap wood. I'm just going to give the top of it a couple of coats of the white paint. I have this reindeer printout that I used on a different project. It's still got the pencil marks on the back, which is how I transferred it before. And I'm going to do the same thing now. So I'll just use my pen and trace it out really nice and firm so I get that pencil mark on the white paint. Using my black oil-based Craft Smart paint pen, I'm going to fill in the reindeer, but I'm going to skip his antlers. When I'm coloring, I always like to do an outline first and then fill in after. I thought I would add a little bit of Christmas cheer for this reindeer, so I'm using some of this Deco Art chalky finish paint in the color Romance. And I'm also going to mix a little bit of black in there just to get a nice deeper red color. Using a fine tip artist paintbrush, I'm going to just fill in the antlers. To make the reindeer look a little bit more distressed, I'm just going to take a tiny little dry brush and do some stippling, so some pouncing up and down, just to give it a little bit more of a worn look. My next project is using this market fresh eggs sign which doesn't do well in my area for some reason there aren't a lot of farmhouse people here so what i'm doing is just taking some sandpaper and sanding down the letters and the chicken just to get rid of that raised finish then just to cover up any imperfections i gave it a coat of black chalk paint and now i'm going over it with a couple coats of white chalk paint i'm leaving the frame around the edge the way it is because it's really nicely distressed and it's one step that I don't have to do again. I really loved the way I dry brushed that first tree in the first project of this video so I decided to do the same thing for this one. But what I'm doing is I'm going to make this tree just a little bit bigger. So I've taped off the little stump down at the bottom and I'm going to center it at the very top and start dry brushing this part of the tree. What I've done now is just moved the stencil down and to the left a little bit to make the bottom part of a larger tree and I'll repeat the process on the right hand side. This is going to give me a much larger tree. Since some of the areas at the bottom got a little darker I'm just taking a smaller brush and just adding in some darker segments to the top too. Then I'm just adding a little hand painted tree trunk. There's a bunch of white space on this sign, so I am going to be putting some letters in. And this is a brand new stencil that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I actually grabbed four or five different designs. And I really like these because they're nice and thick. I will be cutting them into strips just so they're easier to work with. And then I'm going to stencil in some letters. These letter stencils are just fitting in between those two ridges, so I didn't want to take the chance of making a mess with my makeup sponge and the paint and stenciling them. Instead, I'm using my pencil and I'll trace them out and then fill them in with a marker. So I'm putting farm fresh Christmas trees and this is the marker that I love to use. It's a scrapbook marker. I've had it for ages. It still works really well. The one thing I have to remember about this though is that it smudges. So I'm going to be very, very careful to not smudge any of this lettering because I don't want it to look that distressed. I wanted that frame of the Christmas tree to pop so I'm just using a little bit of black and I'm just going very gently around the edge to distress it and make the frame stand out more. I wanted to dress this up a little bit with some greenery so I've got these little stems that I picked up from Amazon. I'll have a link to that down in the description box. I actually found these from B DIY Beauty on Purpose, Leah Nepp, and they are just beautiful and they come in a huge pack. I think you get like a hundred pieces for $14. So I'm going to just take some hot glue and glue those to the very top of the sign. I'm also adding a little bit of holly and I'm using my Dollar Tree makeup applicator which is a silicone little paddle to hold down the hot glue so I don't burn my fingers. Those little fingertip protectors are a little too small for my fat chubby fingers so this works out really well for me. This is a tip that I picked up from Holly over at Hot Humble Pie. 
I'm also going to just add a few of these berries. This next project is my absolute favorite. It is just adorable. I'm using some regular size popsicle sticks and I've got two sets of four here and they're about three and a half inches in length. Then I'm cutting some more pieces that are about one and a half inches in length. And I'm using these miter shears. I love them. I just got them not too long ago. I will have a link down in my description box for them if you want to go check them out. They are super handy for making different angled cuts, but even just working with popsicle sticks, I can't use scissors. It's just too difficult for me. So I am just using these miter shears to make the job easier. Now that I've got these one and a half inch pieces cut, I'm going to use those as the pieces to glue the four longer pieces together. And that's going to make the sides of this little box that I'm creating. So now I've created two of the long sides of my box and now I have to create the short sides. So these are one and a half inch pieces maybe almost two inches, maybe one and three quarter inches. Anyway, you can make this any size you want. It really doesn't matter. But this is the pattern that I'm using. So I'm going to now glue these together with these little side pieces. But what I'm doing now is I'm going to hang that side piece off the four because I want there to be a little bit of an overhang. And the reason I'm doing that is when I glue everything together, I want to have a nice seam in the corners. Now that the sides are all assembled, I need to give it a bottom. So I just cut some more popsicle sticks in the length that I needed and I'm just gluing them to either edge. Now it's time to paint, or I should say stain. I'm using some burnt umber and a little bit of black. I'm going to mix that together and then I will use a spray bottle to add some water and just make it a nice deep brown stain. I'm going to cover all of the box, the bottom, the sides and the inside. While I wait for the box to dry, I'm going to take some of these little sticks that I got from my backyard and I'm going to dry brush some of them with white. I want them to look a little bit like birch logs. They're not going to be 100%, but some of that little bit of bark is going to show through. I just wanted to have a couple different colors of wood. I'm going to take this white marker that I have. It's not a paint pen, it's just a marker and it's gonna be very faint and that's what I want. I wanted this box to kind of look old. So what I'm doing is just writing in the words birch and pine and I'm going to put a little dollar amount next to them. So the birch will be 10 cents and the pine will be five cents. I'm going to add in some of these greenery picks and then I'll glue in the logs too. And at the end, I'm just going to add a few little red pit berries. This box is something that I had thrifted a while ago. It's already gotten a coat of paint for a different project, so I'm going to repurpose it for this one. I just need to remove the latch. I'm going to sand down the wood where the latch was just to make an even surface. This paint that I'm using is just an eggshell paint that can be used anywhere in your home. It was a mist tint that I picked up at the hardware store and it's kind of a taupey gray color. It's fairly dark, but I thought it would be a really nice base coat for a wood texture. So I'm going to give this whole box one coat. I needed to add something inside the box to make it higher. So this is just a cardboard box that I had laying around. I cut it to size and now I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of the box. 
instead of painting this, I'm going to just fold up a piece of paper a couple of times over and then cut it to fit and glue that right on top of the cardboard. I also put a bead of hot glue between the paper and the box just to hold it in place better. Now I'm going to work with these little pieces of scrap wood and I'm just going to glue the triangle pieces onto the rectangle pieces and make little wood houses. With a dry brush and some burnt umber acrylic paint, I'm going to go around the edges like this and make it look like wood grain. Once the brown is dry, I'm going to start doing the same thing with black. A dry brush, actually I'm using the same brush, and I'm just going to make it look more distressed and old and weathered. I'm making a little bottle brush village and what I've done here is just put all of the bottle brush trees in there to plan how I want it to look. Then I decided that I wanted to raise the houses, make them just a little bit taller. So I'm using a tumbling tower block and I'm going to glue that onto the bottom of each of the houses. Then I'm just going to use hot glue to glue the house in place. I'll repeat the same thing for the second one. Then I'm just going to start hot gluing the trees onto the paper. I've left the plan in place and I'm just going to pick up each tree individually, add some hot glue to the bottom and stick it down. I've got a whole big box of bottle brush trees from last year and from this year, but I came across these little birch branches that were really sweet. I think I picked these up at my Dollarama last year for a buck 25, I think for two. And I'm just going to be pulling apart the branches to make it look more like a natural tree. I decided to add a couple at the back and one in the front. Then I started putting the little bottle brush trees in and this kind of changed a little bit. I just wanted them in the front a little bit, but I also used them around the sides and the back for some fillers. For a final touch, I'm going to use some Epsom salts and put them in where there's all the white space to cover up the paper and to give it a little bit more of a Christmas snowy look. There really isn't an easy way to glue down these Epsom salts. I didn't want them to lose their sparkle. So I will probably take the salt out once I go to store it after the holidays. Here's how my little box Christmas village looks. My next project for you is using all dollar store products. I have three Dollar Tree Christmas trees and this is a wood look pot that I picked up at Dollarama in the summertime and never used it. So I thought it would be the perfect addition for this tree. So I am sure everyone is familiar with these little Dollar Tree trees. They are worth a dollar because they're very sparse. But if you do a little magic with them, you can make them look better. So what I'm doing is opening up the tree and I'm going to just open it up one side. So I'm going to leave the back side flat and I'm just going to open up all of the branches. And I'll do that for two of them. What I'm going to do now is put them together back to back so the both flat sides will meet in the center. And I'm just going to use some small black zip ties or cable ties to hold them together. I'm going to add one at the bottom and one towards the top. I've taken out the third tree and I've fluffed it all the way around. Now I'm going to zip tie that onto the first bunch of trees about a third of the way down. These zip ties are on the shorter side so I just put two of them together and that will do the trick. Then I'm going to end up with a two and a half foot tree. This is what the tree looks like. Now it is out of shape because I've got the bottom fluffed and then it goes narrow and then I've got bigger branches from the bottom of the third tree and then going narrow again. Well, I'm going to give you a trick to fix that. So what I'm doing here is fluffing it out as best I can 
And please excuse the craft space behind the tree. This is what some of my craft room looks like. And if you're a fellow crafter, you probably have the same kind of thing happening in your home. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a crafter. I've got a piece of floral foam glued to the bottom of the container. And now I'm just going to push the tree right down into it. So here's another Dollar Tree product that I'm sure everyone is familiar with. It's those wired garland ties. I've got a pack here. I think there are 12 or 15 in a pack. What I'm going to do is just kind of run my fingers around it to fluff up the branches a little bit better. And then I'm going to cut it into three different pieces. Real Christmas trees don't have single branches coming out from the trunk of the tree. So what I'm going to do to the majority of these branches is take the pieces that I've cut, wrap them around the individual branches about halfway down, and then it will become a branch with three stems on it instead of one stem. This is going to make the tree look so much more high end and realistic. So I'm going to continue to do that and fill out the tree. That third tree on the top needs a haircut. So you can see that I've already trimmed one side of it and I'm going to go ahead and trim the other side because I want this to be a taller, narrower tree. I don't need all of these branches sticking out so far from the original trunk. You can see it's already starting to look better. What I'm going to do with those little bits that I cut off is use some hot glue and glue them in towards the stem to give the trunk and the center of the tree a little bit more fullness. Okay, now check this out. This is three Dollar Tree trees. And look at how beautiful it's turned out. Oh, plus a package of the garland ties. It looks beautiful. So what I'm going to do now is just decorate it with some fillers and a little bit of white berries and some pine cones. I want this tree to be more natural and rustic. I'm not gluing any of these pieces into the tree because I'm probably going to do a little bit of a different theme with it next year. So I want to be able to just pull everything off at the end of the season. I'm also now going to take it outside and give it a spray of snow. The last project that I have today is using this rustic wood frame that I built out of some scrap pallet wood and some thin MDF and I put the frames together all at once a couple of weeks ago when the weather was still really nice and I was able to get outside and use my table saw. I'm going to paint the interior of the sign, so the panel, with a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum Linen White chalk paint. I'm using a bit of black in with this beautiful green color to make a really deep dark green. I want my Christmas tree sign to not be the traditional farmhouse black and white sign. I'm thinking that a little bit of green might look really nice. Instead of stenciling in the design, I'm going to use my dry brush and I'm going to do a dry brush technique with all of these trees. This is something that I kind of stumbled upon a while back and I really love the effect of this. I think a solid tree looks nice too, but I'm just loving this type of texture that I'm getting from the dry brushing. As I was filming this reveal, I realized that I haven't done a big reveal like this in a really long time. So ta-da, there are my three beautiful Christmas trees. The touch of green, I think, is just perfect. There were a couple of areas that got a little bit of a thicker color. So I decided just to go in with my little paintbrush here and just add a little bit more dimension to the trees. The other thing that I decided to do was take a little bit of black on a small dry brush and just add a little bit more dimension to the trunk at the bottom of each of the trees. 
A few weeks ago, I was at the Dollar Tree and they had these beautiful lettering stencils, these alphabet stencils. They are super high quality. The stencil itself is really nice and thick. I like to cut my stencils apart into the strips because they're easier to manage. You can leave them whole if you want, but when I'm working with smaller dimensions and I need to get inside, I would rather have them separate. So I'm going to be just stenciling on with a makeup sponge and some black paint. And of course, keeping with farmhouse tradition, I'm gonna use the words farm fresh at the top and then I'm gonna put something a little bit different down at the bottom. I've also got a makeup sponge tip for you. The ones I'm using here are very soft. They're not the ones I had previously. This is a new bag that I bought and they're really, really soft. You really have to use a lot of pressure to get the color to go on. So I'm gonna be tossing these and I'm gonna be looking for some firmer ones. So just make sure that they are a really nice firm sponge and not anything too squishy. Down at the bottom, I'm using my pencil to write out the words pine, spruce, and fir. Now I'm just going to trace over the letters using my favorite scrapbooking marker, which is really old. I've had it for a very long time, but it has stood the test of time. It still has tons of ink in it. And I like to use this instead of my CraftSmart oil-based markers when I'm doing more of a fine line font. Using my ruler, I'm just going to mark some long lines in between the words. I'm using the fine tip end of the same marker and I like to draw shadow lines on my fonts. This makes them look more finished and more professional. The last thing I'm going to do for this sign is add some grain sack striping to both ends. There's a little bit too much white space, so I needed to add something in. I'm starting about a half an inch in, and I'm just gonna do one of the thick marker lines all the way down. Then I'm gonna move in about another quarter of an inch and do another set of lines, which will be the thicker stripe. And then I'll do another thin stripe on the opposite side. One thing that I like to do when I'm using markers and a ruler is every time I pick it up, I wipe off the ink. There's always a little bit of ink left over. And when I'm working on a white space, I don't want any of that ink to transfer and make a mess. Finally, I wanted to add some greenery. I have these picks that I got in a bag from Amazon and they will be linked down in my description box. And I've also got a few of the Dollar Tree pine cones. I'm just gonna use some hot glue and attach those to the top of the frame. I just love how this sign turned out and I've got it hanging in my living room. For my second DIY gift, I'm going to make a gnome. So there's lots of people out there who are gnome collectors and they're really not that difficult to make. I'm using this buffalo check or buffalo plaid, whatever you wanna call it, fabric, it's flannel. And it was a sheet that I picked up at a thrift store. I'm always on the lookout for different patterns and the grays and whites and blacks are something that I really like. I've also got this navy blue stocking, which is an old stocking that's not being used anymore. The first thing I'm doing is making a hem and I'm just using hot glue to fold it up and place it down. Be careful this does get hot and I did burn my fingers a couple of times even though I have those finger protectors from the Dollar Tree and I have that other little makeup sponge thing too. So there it is, the makeup applicator. So make sure that you're using something like this to protect your fingers. Now that I have a nice edge, I'm going to match it up to the pattern and then simply hot glue it in place. So I'm making a tube of sorts and that's just going to be the start of how I'm making the body. 
I've turned it inside out and you can see here that I'm just going to gather one of the ends and I'm going to use a piece of jute string just to tie it off. A dab of hot glue on the knot will make sure that it doesn't unravel. I've turned it right side out and what I'm going to do is just take some of these sand colors and fillers and beads and all sorts of junk that's in there and I'm going to fill it up about halfway. This is going to really help to secure the bottom of the gnome and make sure that he doesn't fall over. If you don't have this you could use split peas, you could use beans, you could use gravel, stone, whatever you have. I just thought this would be perfect way to use some of this up. Next, I'm going to use some of this stuffing that was just from an old pillow. I'm just going to pull it apart, loosen it up, and then just push it in a little bit, just so he has a little bit more of a fluffier body too. Then I'm just going to gather up the top the same way I did the bottom and tie it off with some jute string. Now it's time to work on his hat. I'm just going to cut the fur off the top of the stocking because I won't be needing it for this project. And when you're cutting fur like this, it just gets all over the place. So just make sure that you pull off any of the excess there just so it doesn't float around and get in your eyes and face and everything. That's what happens to me all the time. So I'm just going to clean that up. And then I'm going to cut out a triangle of sorts. I'm going to use one of the seams that's already there as a base and then I'm going to just cut out a really tall skinny triangle. I'm going to hot glue the two long sides together and that will be the back side of his hat. So here I'm just trying his hat on for size and that's why I put some of the pillow on the inside because if I need to squish it down a little bit I have the ability to do so. So you just want to make sure that it's going to go on all the way around nice and snug. I have this white faux fur and I'm just going to cut a piece off and then I'm going to form it to make a beard for him. To cut this fur, you'll need a really sharp pair of scissors. I have my sewing scissors, but you could also use tiny cuticle scissors or anything that's really sharp. What I'm doing is making small tiny cuts and I'm making sure not to go all the way through to the fur at the bottom. I just want to remove the backside and then it will just pull apart like that. This will prevent me from cutting the fur down because I want that to be nice and long like you can see here. So now I wanna make sure that it's going to fit on my little guy's body and it's looking pretty good like it's the right length. It's just too square down at the bottom. So I'm gonna do the same technique with the scissors, cut very gently and make sure I don't go all the way down to the bottom and just cut the bottom portion into a V shape. Now that I've got the shape the way I want it, I'm going to use some hot glue and glue that right onto the body. Now it's time to work with the hat. I'm going to take some more of that pillow stuffing and stuff it about halfway up because I want this hat to stand up really nicely, but I also want the end of it to fold over. So I'm just going to be putting some of this stuffing right in the center of it. With the hat just sitting on his head, I figured out where I want his nose to go. So I'm going to use hot glue and glue it right onto the beard. I'm also going to push some of the hair out of the way so there are a little bits of hair falling on top of the bead. Once the glue is set, I'll be able to start working on his hat. I'm just going to pull it down until I get it in the right spot. I want to be able to tuck that little bead right underneath the hat. So I'll be placing some hot glue there first and then I'll work my way around to the back of his head. As I work my way around with the hot glue, I'm just going to give the hat a little bit of a wiggle every once in a while to make sure that it grabs the hot glue and sticks really well. So I have decided to make a little ball for his hat and it's going to be in the same fabric as his little body. So I just cut out a circle and now I'm just gluing the top part together and then I'm just going to fill it in with some of the pillow stuffing. I'm going to gather all of the edges together and then tie it off with a piece of twine. 
now using a lot of hot glue, I'm going to glue that ball right to the end of his hat. And you can see here that I'm wiggling it around so all of those little furry fibers can catch into the glue and stick. To cover up the jute string and where the hat meets the little ball, I'm cutting off some little bits of fur and I'm going to hot glue those right into place. It's going to do double duty because it turns out so stinking cute. I used some hot glue at the very top of his hat and pinched it together so I could put it in the direction I wanted it to fall. So I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I used to be a hairdresser. I am still a little bit. So I am taking some hairspray to that little faux fur and fluffing it up and making it stand up and look a little bit more cutie patootie. I really love how this gnome turned out. I love the colors and how his little beard looks. So I'm not sure if I'm going to give this one away or I might even just keep him for myself. I really hope you enjoyed these 15 Christmas DIYs. Stay tuned to my channel because I'm going to have some brand new Christmas ideas coming your way soon. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you like this video and you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will show you exactly where to click. See you in the next one.